Comcast. Competitive acapella group sings the Universal Studios theme during their set. Please don't stop the, please don't stop the. White guys singing Rihanna. Wait, two dudes have microphones and the rest are being picked up by stage mics not even visible in the shot? If acapella is your co-pilot, then what is God doing? Beatboxing? Who's the actual pilot? You? I'm guessing this plane crashes pretty often. Movie thinks if it puts respected comic actors in this, I'll forget I'm watching a movie clearly riding the coattails of Glee, or ripping it off, whatever you prefer. You're unreliable, and your breath smells like egg. Group leader takes acapella cheerleader competition dance-offs way too seriously cliche. Flight attendant outfits might increase the power of boners, but won't help your acapella group competition final score. Oh, is it me, or do we just take a left turn into Snoozeville? It is not you. I saw the sign, and it opened up my eyes, I saw the sign. Female acapella group actually thought that singing Ace of Bass would not end in at least one of their singers vomiting on stage. Also, in 2013, Hollywood still thinks someone grossly puking equals comedy, and Hollywood has never been more wrong. This is f***ing gross. Jesus. I need a minute. And that's how the movie warms you up, ladies and gentlemen. It just projectile vomited bean dip all over your face, so take that. So far, John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks have stolen this movie from the main characters, but we won't get to see them again for a long time. DJ Software action scene gets us up close and personal with the magic of laptop track mixing. Next up, a 10 minute tour de force unbroken shot of keyboard strokes during a session of Adobe Premiere. Also, you know she's unique because her fingernails are black. The track she's working on has a sample of young MC's bust a move, which means she's trying to become successful using other people's shit and making her own thing out of it. Now, I know nobody else would do such a thing. So this character has already pissed me off beyond belief, and I am really angry about it. Although, character is Anna Kendrick, and I just can't stay mad at her for long, no matter what I do. So, sin on her for making me like her so much. Backseat, rocking out to Kansas. And your official BU rape whistle. Whoa, whoa, lighthearted movie just threw a rape whistle into the mix. Also, are there unofficial, like, knockoff BU rape whistles? This kid is way into Star Wars, and that's fine. But what the f*** are Houdini posters doing next to the Death Star and ruining an excellent Star Wars motif? For no reason at all that I can think of, I'm going to knock a sin off. Becca cranks up her loud-ass mix right in front of the roommate that already hates her, without using headphones. Kind of a dick move, Becca. I need to move to LA and get a job at a record label and start paying my dues. Yeah. DJing is not a profession, it's a hobby. First off, I don't even know why the career-driven adult Becca hasn't already moved to LA and skipped the college, even if her professor dad allows her to get an education for free. Second off, Kip wants to do something parents don't approve of cliche. I'm going to the activities fair with my super good friend, Kimmy Jin. And we're going to leave you here all alone in the dorm room with no way of locking it when you finally decide to leave. And Becca's tracks got stolen, probably by that asshole in Step Up. Of your quad night. It's troublemakers. You gotta love those college campuses where everyone you need to know is out on the quad doing the one thing their characters are known for. The Messiahs of Burden. So two of last year's national acapella finalist squads were from this one tiny college? I auditioned for you three times and never got in because you said my boobs looked like baloney. Or black circular pieces of tape. Also, that's a valid complaint, but that's not a valid complaint for getting into an acapella group where you'll be wearing outfits that will cover your baloney boobs. So I'm conflicted on the validity of this complaint while I try to figure out whether my boner is voluntary. I am confident that we will find eight super hot girls with bikini ready bodies. Wow, super hot girls with bikini ready bodies are sexist toward their own gender. But what can I say? I'm a quarter sexist myself. Ironically, I get it from my mom's side. Quidditch club. Ah oh, yeah, DJs. Deaf Jews. Two deaf Jewish people decided to make a club. Basically so that Becca could get excited about joining a DJ club only to have the rug pulled out from under her. They're not even at their table right now, so they can drop the bomb on her all comedy style. Uh, I saw you guys perform in Mall of America like three years ago. Jesus, how long has this college acapella group been acapelling? Also, now we're supposed to believe that this guy we met in a Darth Vader cape, and with his side of the room decked out in Star Wars and Houdini posters, is suddenly the hugest fan of the Troublemakers, and he didn't have one poster, shirt, or any other kind of memorabilia that suggested this beforehand? You guys go a long way for comedy, and we appreciate that. It's still cynical as f I do know you. I sang to you. I remember because you were in a taxi. Actually, no. She was standing outside a taxi when you were shamelessly air guitar in Kansas. More exciting track mixing! Becca? Asshole dad just walks in daughter's dorm room without getting the go-ahead. I can't hear a word you say. Becca unknowingly belts out a great audition for people who just happen to want her to join the acapella group and just happen to be in the bathroom at the same time. Cameraman fails at his job right now. Scene does not contain a lap dance. You were singing Titanium, right? You know David Guetta? Yeah, he's so tough to stumble across in everyday life. If you sing the same boring girly shit every year, you will blow chunks all over the place. Despite being an asshole, this bumper Alan Dickhead is right. 
How in the f*** did the Bellas get into a national championship singing stuff that the audience and judges immediately found boring? It was cool, but it was all pretend and... Here's the bad singer montage cliché. It's almost as tired as the woman who goes on dates with men who are hilariously unacceptable cliché. Dedicated, you took the time. Wasn't long until I called you mine. Wow, they all auditioned in the same key? That's amazing. I didn't know we had to prepare that song. Oh, that's okay. Sing anything you want. Person conducting auditions is massively unfair to the rest of the tryouts because she saw this chick's boobs in the shower once. Why is this dude still here? Is it because he's a main character trying to be the female lead's love interest? Well, back off, asshole. She's mine. The Sopranos. Jessica, Mary Elise, Lily. You know, the one you can't even hear because she's so quiet? For comedy. And our altos. Fat Amy. You know, one of the awful singers you didn't like. For comedy. Do my eyes deceive me? Are you a Bart and Bella? Nope. Kristen Stewart played Bella. Somehow Anna Kendrick was one of the secondary characters, and Edward Cullen's obsession would have made more sense. But I can see how you'd make that mistake. Ladies, gather around. Ready for a show. Yeah, these guys probably aren't popular in any other circle. But in this circle, there's supposedly a really popular acapella group that wins national championships and should be swatting away women in this world left and right. Gotta keep your head up. Oh. Aka party. Gotta keep your head up. Oh. Wait, this amphitheater and its party is located right outside Benji and Jesse's dorm room? I guess for optimal sadness? Does anyone here have anything to confess? It was an accident. You mean boning a troublemaker? How do you accidentally bang someone? Whoops, slick floors fell right onto a penis there. But while we're here. Also, why even admit it? Are there further penalties for lying about it past getting kicked out of the Bellas? This is a list of all of the songs that we have ever performed. And you will notice that we only do songs made famous by women. Because what didn't work in the past will almost certainly work this year. What are you doing? I'm doing horizontal running. And yet, banging a troublemaker is somehow worse than this behavior. I can see your toner through those jeans. That's my dick. Damn, my whole world just got f***ed up there. This is a cute scene, but damn, how long have they been working together now? Surely a guy as affable as him has been able to break the ice with the cool DJ wannabe chick before now. Jaws, E.T., The Breakfast Club, Star Wars, and Rocky. I would have included Taxi Driver and Apocalypse Now, but I'm only going for the popular boat here. Best scored and soundtrack movies of all time. Wow, movie gives the finger to Michael Giacchino, James Horner, Hans Zimmer, and a host of f***ing amazing composers. Not to mention the soundtracks of f***ing classic song compilation movies by folks like Quentin Tarantino, Cameron Crowe, and Martin Scorsese. What, do you not like movies or something? Apparently Becca would be excellent at CinemaSins, which we just might be open to giving her a job. But on the flip side, Jesse would be excellent at criticizing cinema sins with that question people always ask us. Both of these characters have their place in our hearts. And Darth Vader is Luke's father. Oh, right, so you just happened to guess the biggest cinematic reveal in history? Vader in German means father. Oh, come on, it certainly isn't pronounced like that. And it's not spelled like that either. Plus, you'd still have to do some decent sleuthing to figure out that reveal even if you made the connection. So don't give me that shit. I still love you, though. It's the biggest cinematic reveal in history. You said this line after The Crying Game, The Sixth Sense, The Usual Suspect, Fallen, The Prestige, Primal Fear, and a host of great cinematic reveals had already come out. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine! And you're mine! This riff-off is kind of fun, I guess, but they could have explained the rules beforehand. You hear what the rule is later, but it seems like a Greatest Hits commercial where they play snippets of songs so you'll buy a compilation CD. Hey, man, is that Freedom Rock? Well, turn it up, man! I'm having a good time. I really am but I still feel the need to remind myself, you, that I'm watching an acapella riff off in an empty swimming pool at a college for nerds. It's a tough blow, ladies. The word you needed to match was it, and you sang it's. Hey man, I'm with you. Nitpickers are the best people in the world, of course, but that's hardly an accurate technicality. And what a bunch of bullshit. If you felt so strongly about it, you should have cut her off earlier, f face. So wait, they won? I get that they won this round, but they sang like two rounds. What a f***ing rip off this riff off is. The Breakfast Club, 1985. Greatest ending to any movie ever. God damn it. You made this movie after such film endings as The Crying Game, The Sixth Sense, The Usual Suspects Fall. This song launched Simple Minds in the US. Could have been a Billy Idol song, but he turned it down, idiot. Yeah, because Billy Idol wasn't successful in the least and could have really used that Breakfast Club boost. Besides, do you want Breakfast Club ending in a Billy Idol song instead of this one? Things happen for a reason, dude. The white girl is back. That's super racist. Hey, just because you wear an outfit like the one you wore in Up in the Air doesn't mean you're getting an Oscar for this. You can't fool the Academy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The Acapella Regional Championship brought to you by Apple. And the two announcers, who will go on to announce the national championship, but whatever. Pay no attention to those name actors we paid too much for. Also, is this on TV? Or the radio? At least in Dodgeball, they were on the Ocho, and it kind of made sense. But this? Who's listening to this? And who would want announcers giving play-by-play -play over the songs? Also, packed houses? 
These are niche acts, but apparently they have the pull of Beck or 1980s Def Leppard. To one day win a trophy by making music with their mouth. Pretty progressive and liberally themed movie decides to drown out the Lily Allen lyrics with play-by-play, -play, which is odd, considering the actual lyrics they obscure, which are, So you say it's not okay to be gay, well I think you're just evil. You're just some racist who can't tie my laces. Meaning, movie is afraid to be anti-racist and pro-gay. Is it me, or are those skirts just not working anymore? <laughs> hey, f*** you, buddy. There's some pretty damn hot replacement chicks in this group. We're going to split hairs here? Do we need 100% hotness to get down with the skirts? I, I got a new life. I understand tradition, but the fellas literally performed the same song as last year. And I think that's a party foul, even in acapella circles. Yeah, in second lucky place, you. and advancing to this year's semifinals, the Barton Bella! Yeah! <laughs> Even though they sang boring and old songs according to the acapella announcers. Hey, it's discount skinny Ron Jeremy. And discount Donald Faith. Holy sh! Yes. Oh, just what this movie needed. An acapella fist fight, complete with known comic actors playing second fiddle cameos. It's just like the Anchorman fight, only with more copying. Hey, Hillary Swank from Million Dollar Baby. Hey, you know you just have to say, hey, Million Dollar Baby. You don't have to reference a specific actress. Well, maybe he does, since you stated so clearly that you hate movies and don't watch them. Maybe it's a reflex on his part. You ever think about that? Thanks for bailing me out. Well, I didn't. You call my dad? Becca's dad, who is angry and paid the bail, decides to sit in the car to wait for his daughter, so the reveal is more dramatically devastating. I don't need your help. You're not my boyfriend. God, I hate it when Anna Kendrick reminds me of this every day when I break into her house to do her laundry. I did not have you pegged as an acapella girl. Yeah, it's because you don't know Becky like I do. Is this really a rivalry? Early on, it looked like Bella kind of liked this DJ dude, and I don't blame her. He's pretty dreamy. But where the hell does this come from? What a douchey thing to say, even for the guy we want to be with Becca by the end of the movie. Fat Amy is clearly not unconscious or showing any signs of needing CPR. But because the movie thinks Cynthia Rose being a lesbian is so hilarious, they make her do this. When any child knows, Amy doesn't need CPR. Papa threw a big ass burrito at me. So why all the theatrics about getting shot? Was it all for the CPR gag? Please don't tell me that was all for the CPR gag. Jesus, this is the slowest drive to anywhere, ever, anything. I hopped off the plane at LAX. Unfortunately, this bus sing-along must compete with Almost Famous, in which Tiny Dancer was sung. And when it comes to cinematic sing-along throwdowns, Elton John is going to beat Miley. So, up the ante, movie. Running out of gas on the way to something really important cliche. And let's not forget this is all because of the hysterics involving a burrito. So this movie is one part Step Up, one part that reality competition show Pentatonix won, and one part the end of Sister Act 2? I, I got a new life. Seriously, how has the movie not answered the question about how this group gets so far in competitions with their boring ass act? Apparently judges visibly show what pleases and displeases them so you can change your act in the middle to accommodate them. Also, this one little extra flourish is going to make the judges find it less boring? Get the f*** out of here with that weak shit. Of course you're here right now. I don't need your help, okay? Can you back off? I just wrote a rant about how much of an asshole Becca is, but how can I stay mad at her? Anyway, what an asshole. Take a look, fellas, because I can honestly say this is the most convenient bag noticed by a secondary character to advance the plot in the history of cinema. Happy spring break. Thanks. Indeed. Thanks for that unexpected exposition, Kimmy Lynn. It has come to our attention that you are not in college. I'm speechless. I mean, you trust someone and then they do this to you. What I mean, of course, is this movie telling us there's actually a kid out there who loves acapella so much he would pose as a college student to enter competitions for it. Also, movie gets a convenient out to propel the plot. You know, these are all pretty good movies. E.T., Jaws, Rocky, Schindler's List, Say Anything, Animal House, and even Slumdog Millionaire has its charm. But f***ing Scarface is officially the most overrated movie of all time. And with all the shit Becca was talking about movies earlier, I find it hard to believe she got through it just because she's secretly making up with Jesse behind his back. It's kind of not the same without everyone here. We need Becca. Really? Becca's the one who's been holding this shit together the whole time? Since when? <laughs> oh man, I just ate a hot dog too. If you're a Chicago Blackhawks fan, you extra hate this puke fight ballet scene. Lily is pretty much doing what the audience is forced to do right now. Now that everyone is kissed and made up, they nail the song they practice on the first try. With your messed up vocal cords, you can hit the bass notes. <laughs> I mean, I was already giggling, but... <laughs> Movie will now turn into a concert film, but is it interested in letting us see some of the choreography without massive edits? It is not. You don't think that's a problem? It's a problem. Gone are those Bella uniforms, and this is a whole new look for them, and it is hot, hot, hot! You clearly didn't like them before because of the new faces on the team. So why did a change in outfits turn you around on these girls you didn't like to look at before? It's not about the money, money, money! After rehearsing a Bruno Mars thing the night before in the empty swimming pool, the Bellas opt to go with the completely unrehearsed Jesse J medley for the competition. Also, I thought they didn't have much time to get ready for the Lincoln Center performance, but they somehow worked out three songs and all their choreography in, like, a couple days, I guess. Won't you come see about me? Damn, this girl went a long way to win the guy, but not the competition. All right, nerds. 
Let's go with... Suspense. Oh, Chloe, don't worry. It's just God punishing you because you're a ginger. That's it? One freaking outtake in the middle of the credits? Also, that's racist. I have notes. <gasps> what? Oh my God. This year's annual Las Vegas International Dodgeball Open, brought to you exclusively here on ESPN 8, The Ocho. What is it? Here's the thing, we started out friends. No! Kelly Clarkson! I don't think I've ever been this excited. You're excited? <laughs> Feel these nipples! But I am my father's daughter. I am Rosemary's granddaughter. When you start with the numbers, Carol. <laughs> and then tickets out for gold. Turning back. She just. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Hunger Games. And may the odds be ever in your favor. And he had this rat shopper. It was all flames and stuff. Oh, and. His face was a skull, and it was on fire. On fire? Yeah, like... Like that much fire. Here's a pitch-perfect drinking game. Order up some Club W wine by going to clubw.com slash cinemasins, then watch Pitch Perfect. Drink a sip of wine every time the following happens. Something racist, sexist, fat shaming, or otherwise discriminatory, a song, a character pukes, or Anna Kendrick is adorable. And if you remember any of your evening, be sure to send your memories to cinemasins at gmail.com because they'll make one hell of a video, since you'll be drunk as sh. <coughs> anyway, clubw.com slash cinemasins is where you can sign up for monthly wine to your door delivery service. It's wine to your door. First bottle's free, just for our viewers. Do you ever just get down on your knees and thank God that you know me and have access to my dementia? Wine. Where is the God of and wine? To your door. Where is the God of and wine? So, what are you waiting for? Go get your wine on.